Hi, in this lecture we shall see quicksort. As the name says, quicksort is one of the fastest sorting algorithms available. Let us see how it works. Quicksort is a divide and conquer algorithm. Just like merge sort, it is convenient to think that the array that we are sorting, A, is stored somewhere in memory, while the input to quicksort will be two indices, low and high, inside the array. First, if the subarray low to high is very short, then it is already sorted and we can simply return. This case is just like merge sort. Otherwise, we call a new function, which we're going to describe in a second, called partition. Partition takes as input again two indices and is going to return now a new index called split. Then we're going to call recursively quick sort to the subarray low to split minus one and then to the subarray split plus one to high. From these two recursive call, you can note that the element at position split is put in the right place in the array because we don't touch it anymore. More precisely, what partition does is permute the array A from low to high so that the following property holds. Each element in the subarray A from low to split will be at most the element at position split while each element in position from split plus one to high will be at least the element at position split. Let us see an example. Let us suppose, for example, that our array A consists of the following numbers. Eight, seven, five, three, 15 and 2. When we call partition, a possible output could be that A now is permuted as 5, 3, 2, 7 and 8 and 15 and the value of split is equal to 4. This 4 corresponds to this 7 here. So 7 is put at the right place in the array and in fact we can see that these elements here 5, 3, 2 are all at most 7 while these ones here, 8, 15, are all at least 7. Let us now see the pseudocode for the function partition. For simplicity, we are going to assume that the array contains distinct elements. It is not hard to modify the pseudocode to take into account that some elements are duplicated. The first thing that we do is to pick a pivot index P. P is a pointer to an element called the pivot, which is the one that will be put at, at the right location in the array. There are multiple ways in which you can choose the pivot and we will explain uh, later some of these choices. Now, the element A of P will be placed at right location. It is convenient for what follows um, to begin with swapping A of P, the element that we want to put at the right location, with the last element in the array. 
So this is our array, and this is the location P, this is the location high. The first thing that we do is to swap these two things. Okay, so this cell here now will contain what was A of P. Now that A of P is out of the way, we can perform our swaps. We're going to keep two indices, I and J, and we are going to um, keep incrementing I until we find that the element at position I is larger than our pivot. At that point, we stop, maybe this element here. Similarly, we keep decreasing J until we find that the element at position J is smaller than the pivot. Could be this element here. Now, at this point, we have found two elements which are in the wrong order with respect to the pivot. Because the elements which are less than the pivot should be to the left, and the ones which are bigger should be to the right. So what we do, we swap them. This continues as long as i is less than j. When i is at least j, then we are done. All that we are left to do is to place back the pivot at the right uh, location. The right location turns out to be a of i. So we place the pivot, which we previously put uh, at the position high in the, lo in the location i, and we return the split position, which is i. The running time of this operation is the linear in the length of the array. So it's order of high minus low. Also, we can make a comment about the space. What's good about quicksort is that the space is also very small, it's constant. All these swaps are done in place. I do not need an additional array to perform partition, unlike what I needed for merge sort, where the merge operation required an auxiliary array. Now, we still have to explain how we pick this pivot index P. And this is going to affect the running time. So the running time T of n is going to depend on the choice of the pivot index P. And there are two natural ways in which you could pick the pivot index P. The first choice is to pick the pivot deterministically, okay, with some specific procedure, like always pick the midpoint or, or, or always pick the last element. And the other popular choice is to pick the pivot randomly. Let us, let us first see what happens if you choose the pivot deterministically. Well, if you choose the pivot deterministically, then uh, the worst case in terms of running time happens when, uh, when you do partition, one subarray is empty and the other is of size n minus 1. For example, this happens if you start with an array which is already sorted and you do a partition with respect to the first or the last element. In this case, the recursion for the running time that you will get has this form. T of n is equal to Tm minus 1 plus T0, this is just for the base case, plus Cn, this is the time to perform the partition. on an array of length n. What does this resolve to? Well, it's similar to something that we have analyzed before. It would be Cn 
plus c n minus 1 plus c of n minus 2 plus plus. And this is quadratic in n. So this would be as, as bad as bubble sort. Okay, but the cool thing about quick sort is that if you choose the pivot randomly, so if in the partition function we choose the pivot index p randomly, uniformly random from low to, to high, then you can guarantee that the running time will be order of vendor again with high probability. Specifically, it can be shown that the expected number of comparisons is order of n log n. And if you look at the pseudocode, you can realize that this implies that the overall running time is also bounded by n log n. And again, let's, uh, let's make a, a comment about space. Okay, the space in any case will be order of one. Quick sort works in place, does not need auxiliary arrays. And this is very nice, and it's one of the reasons why people like quick sort. This bound on the expected running time of comparisons is somewhat technical. And for now, we are going to skip it, but we may, we may come back to it later. That's it for now. We have seen a quick sort and the partition function and stated that if you pick the pivot randomly, you can guarantee that the running time is order of n log n with high probability.